All right, guys. Uh, I hope you guys had a great spring break. I hope it was relaxing at least, even if you didn't get to go anywhere. Hope everybody is safe and well and uh, ready to get started uh, and try to do the best we can to finish out. Uh, we've got basically, if nothing changes, we've got another month left of online learning. So uh, continue to uh, send me feedback. I haven't gotten a lot of feedback. Uh, those are anonymous, so you can uh, tell me what you think so far about what we've been doing. I make suggestions, uh, and I am willing to, to give anything a try. If you uh, are doing different things with other teachers that you really like, uh, let me know about those, and maybe we can incorporate some of that uh, into what we're doing here. Uh, but overall, you guys have been doing a great job, and just keep it up. So today... Uh, we're talking about the steps in civil and criminal cases, and uh, basically this comes from this paper uh, that we got before the break. Uh, so if you don't have this handy, uh, make sure you find it. This is what I'll be going over, uh, describing each of the steps in civil cases and criminal cases. Uh, remember, the unit we're going over deals with due process uh, and the rights that we have uh, as defendants. Uh, and that can be the rights you have in a, as a defendant in a criminal case or a civil case. So we'll be uh, reviewing uh, what, what the difference is between those two things. Um, there's also some digital copies of this online uh, posted, uh, and they actually, one of them has an answer bank that you can use, and I'm going to be using those answers from that answer bank uh, as I go through each of these steps. So let's get started. All right, so we're going to start with civil cases, and if you recall last week, or excuse me, before spring break, um, the different types of law, civil law deals with disputes between individuals and organizations. Uh, so no one's going to get arrested uh, when we're dealing with civil cases. It could be anything from family law, which would be divorce, adoption, child custody, uh, contracts that are broken or disputed what's in the contract. Um, that word tort, tort law deals with, uh, basically you, you've injured someone. Sometimes it's physical, uh, it could be property damage, uh, but, but there is some overlap. If I commit a crime, let's say if I, if we get into a fight, I could be charged with assault, uh, and that would be part of criminal law, but then you might also want to sue me, uh, for any medical damages that happened because of that fight. Uh, so that would fall under tort law. Uh, so that would be a separate lawsuit along with whatever was going on in the criminal system as well. So there is sometimes some overlap uh, in the situations here. But let's focus on these civil cases. So civil cases, basically we're talking about a lawsuit. So step one is that the plaintiff, the plaintiff is going to file a complaint. Um, so the plaintiff is the person that is doing the suing, the one that is starting the case. So make sure you know that word plaintiff. Uh, so the complaint explains the nature of the lawsuit. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys have watched uh, the Tiger King documentary on Netflix, uh, but there's a lot of legal issues that, that go on in that show. And one of them had to do with uh, the Tiger King using... Uh, the big cat rescue logo and, and uh, basically that would be what we call copyright infringement. So in this case, they took him to court and sued him for using their, uh, their logo. Um, so it was a lawsuit. So they filed a complaint against the tiger King. All right. So the tiger King would have gotten a summons. A summons basically is sent to the defendant explaining the lawsuit, uh, what the lawsuit's about, and it basically summons them to court. So summon means you ask, you're asking them to appear. Uh, like if I'm a wizard and I summon uh, spirits, I'm making that spirit appear. So a summons uh, will be served. You sometimes see in movies where people walk up to someone, hand them a paper, and say, you've been served. 
Well, that that they're issuing them a summons uh, to appear in court. All right, then some time will pass. Usually you get 30 days or so to respond. If you're the defendant, you're going to file what's called an answer. Uh, and you, you, you just you get that typed up by your lawyers uh, or you can do it yourself sometimes. Um, and then you'll file that and that's your response. So within that answer, you can challenge what the plaintiff is saying or you can you know, make arrangements to deal with the matter uh, separately. Uh, I've given you an example here I found online. Basically here they're denying the allegations. So whatever the plaintiff is saying, uh, about you as the defendant, you can answer that. You can respond to that. That's what we call the, the answer. You're challenging the allegations. All right, then some time will pass and assuming you, you've got a lawyer involved, uh, the lawyers will spend this time uh, before you, you go to court uh, discovering evidence. They'll, they'll talk to witnesses, uh, in what's called a deposition. They might have a video deposition where they ask questions of various witnesses about the matter and they'll share evidence. Um, the defendant and the plaintiff's lawyers will, will talk about uh, the, defend, the, uh, the evidence that both sides have. Uh, that will help them make a better judgment about how to proceed uh, moving forward. So we call that discovery. All right. Now, during this this time period, now notice we haven't even really gone to court yet. Um, it's all about preparing. Uh, and you may, both sides may want to compromise. They want to come to a settlement so that they don't have to spend extra money and time going in front of a judge or a jury uh, in a trial setting. So the settlement is what happens uh, outside of court uh, where basically the plaintiff and the defendant agree uh, to settle the lawsuit uh, without going to court. All right, so if there is no settlement and both sides want to go ahead and fight this matter in court, we call that the trial. So this is usually what you'll see on TV. You've got your judge, your jury, you've got the plaintiff lawyers, the defense lawyers, uh, and that's where they are presenting the evidence and calling and questioning witnesses on the stand. Uh, so we call that the trial process. So once that trial is, is over, then the jury has to reach a verdict. Uh, so the jury must weigh what we call a preponderance of the evidence. So in a civil case, they're judging basically who's mostly at fault. Um, it's different in a criminal case. When we talk about the criminal case verdict, that has to be a unanimous, beyond a reasonable doubt verdict. Here in a civil case, it doesn't even have to be unanimous. It just has to be a majority decision by the jury uh, to award uh, either uh, the plaintiff, uh, find in favor of the plaintiff, or find in favor of the defendant in the lawsuit. So that's called the verdict. And then depending on that verdict, uh, one or the other could appeal the case. So whoever loses the case, the lawsuit, does have the chance to appeal. Uh, we talked about that before when we talked about the different types of courts. Uh, there's different levels of courts. After you have your trial courts, usually in a district court, um, then you can appeal the case higher up the, the ladder. And you see the, the diagram there. Um, so after the district courts, depending on if it's federal or state, uh, you would go to the courts of appeal and then possibly you could even appeal it all the way up to a state or the U.S. Supreme Court. OK, so that's a civil case. So this is just another diagram showing you the process. If you start at the top there, you've got your complaints, your answers, the discovery of ed evidence. There could be a settlement, maybe not. Uh, then eventually there might be a trial. Now judges do have the uh, the uh, the power to dismiss these cases. Sometimes uh, people sue other people for really frivolous or petty reasons, and the judge might not think it's an important matter uh, or that it's what's called a frivolous lawsuit, and they might dismiss it, throw it out, 
Um, so that's also an option uh, that they mention here in this diagram. Uh, but eventually you might have a trial and then of course the jury or even a judge. You know, you don't always have to have a jury. You do have the right to a jury um, according to remember your, your Seventh Amendment if you're dealing with a, a lawsuit. <clears throat> Uh, but you could waive the jury and just allow a judge to decide the matter. Uh, so that's civil. So make sure you uh, understand the different steps uh, and what, what happens during those steps. So that's civil, civil cases. So now we're going to turn our attention to criminal cases. So with criminal cases, remember uh, there has to be a crime involved someone's gonna get arrested or they're going to be issued a ticket a ticket or a warrant for their arrest because they've broken a law and that law is, is trying to prohibit a behavior or it, it's asking you to do something uh, like let's say pay your taxes uh, or fill out the census um, some things are required behaviors, others are prohibited behaviors like murder. Uh, well, if you break those laws, then the, the law says you need to be punished. Uh, so that's criminal. Uh, the fact that you, you need to be punished for what you did. So we call that criminal law. So you're obviously going to start with an arrest. So here we got the Tiger King, that's his mugshot. So when we say the arrest and the booking, that's when you're taken into custody. Uh, by the state, by the government. Uh, so what's interesting here is we use that word plaintiff in civil cases. Well, in a criminal case, the plaintiff is always the state, the government, because you have broken one of their laws, so they are bringing you to court, and they, they want to punish you. But remember, you have due process rights, so before they can punish you, they have to go through these procedures. Uh, so by at, during this stage, you're going to be read your rights. You have the right to remain silent. Uh, you have a right to an attorney at this point. Um, so remember those Fifth, Sixth Amendment due process rights. Very important during these uh, these steps. Uh, so you're taken into custody. You're, you're fingerprinted, photographed. You're put into the system, basically. Then eventually, these next series of steps they can happen very quickly or depending on how serious the case is, it might take weeks or months for this to play out. But eventually you're going to have what's called a preliminary hearing uh, where you go before a judge. Usually it might be called the initial hearing uh, where you, you, you see a judge and they're going to talk about what you were arrested for. They're going to talk about the charges. They may or may not ask you to go ahead and, and make a plea. Uh, which we call the arraignment. I'm going to go over that separately. Um, but here, one of the, the main things that's going to happen is they're going to decide if you get bail or not. So bail is, is what you would pay to get released uh, from jail so that you don't have to wait around in jail before your next court hearing uh, or before your trial. So sometimes if you don't get to pay bail, then you're stuck in jail and you've got to do everything from jail before you go back to court. If you pay bail, then you can go home, but then you, you've pro you have to promise that you're going to go back to court for all of your court dates. Uh, so that's part of the preliminary hearing. Now, this step isn't always needed depending on what the crime is. So if, if, you, if they're going to charge you with a felony, something like murder, uh, then what's going to happen is the prosecution – the prosecution is the, the lawyer that represents the government. They're going to go before what's called a grand jury, um, which is different than the jury uh, that, that's used in the trial. So this, this is a group of people that just look at the evidence to see if you should be charged with a felony. And that's part of the Fifth Amendment rights you have, uh, this idea of a grand jury, because before they charge you with something serious like murder, they want to make sure that they have enough evidence to even charge you uh, because they don't want to ruin your reputation with with a false accusation. Uh, so there's this grand jury step, this indictment, which is the official charge uh, for a felony. So that may or may not happen. But if it's going to happen, it's going to happen around this time. Eventually, you're going to know what the charges are. You're going to talk with your lawyers. 
um, to, assuming you have a lawyer, uh, and then you're going to go to your arraignment. Now, this is where you are going to enter your official plea uh, of guilty, not guilty, or something called no contest, where you basically aren't going to fight the charges, but you're not admitting that you did it, uh, so you call it no contest. Um, now, before the arraignment, and I probably should have put this next step before the arraignment, but sometimes you don't even need this. Sometimes it doesn't happen. Uh, so I might go back and forth here. So the plea bargain. So even before the arraignment, uh, you may have come to an arrangement with the prosecution uh, that you're going to plead guilty. We call that a plea bargain. Uh, and the reason you might plead guilty is to get that lesser punishment. So let's say I was charged with first degree murder. Well, if I don't want to risk getting the death penalty, I might take a plea bargain where I plead guilty to manslaughter or second degree murder. Uh, and then I might just go to prison for 25 years. Uh, instead of risking losing in court where I might get the death penalty. So that's called a, a, a plea bargain. You compromise. It's kind of like a settlement, except here you're dealing with, with a criminal matter. Uh, so you are going to plead guilty and get some sort of punishment, hopefully a lesser punishment uh, by uh, the judge is going to issue a lesser punishment. That, that should be part of the, the plea bargain. So that plea bargain can happen. Uh, and usually would happen, of course, before the arraignment. So if you came to a plea bargain, you would uh, let the judge know that at the arraignment, and that's when you would plead guilty. So I probably should have switched those, um, but sometimes you don't have a plea bargain. Uh, so plea bargain and arraignment, if you want to make a little note connecting those two, uh, those would go together. Okay. So... After the arraignment, let's say you've pled not guilty, because obviously if you pled guilty, then the process stops and you, and you go ahead and, and you're, you're punished. Uh, if you plead not guilty, then you're going to have your day in court. You're going to have your trial. Uh, this is where uh, what we call a petite jury, uh, if you've ever heard the movie 12 Angry Men. So you've got these 12 uh, citizens, a jury of your peers. Uh, which is part of the Sixth Amendment. They're going to hear the evidence, the testimony from the witnesses. This is where, once again, you've got the lawyers for the prosecution, which is the government, and then the lawyers for the defense, uh, putting on the, the big show, the trial, calling witnesses, presenting evidence, um, trying to persuade that jury uh, to determine uh, the guilt or innocence of the defendant. So we call that the trial. So the jury in the trial, a criminal trial, uh, has to issue a unanimous verdict. So in a criminal matter, the jury has to be unanimous. All 12 members of the jury have to agree on whether the defendant is guilty or innocent. Now, if you have even one person in that jury that doesn't agree with the rest, you're going to end up with what's called a hung jury. And the judge is going to basically say, we have a hung jury, and there's going to be uh, another trial probably in the future. That's up to the prosecution whether or not they want to uh, charge you again and put on a new trial if the jury can't come to a unanimous verdict. Because in order to prove someone guilty, it has to be beyond a reasonable doubt. Uh, that is the burden of proof. That the jury is working with. They should have no doubt that the defendant committed that crime. So we call that the verdict. Now, this next step is, is uh, unique to criminal matters, and that's the sentencing. So obviously in a civil case, there's no punishment involved. You're just awarded damages or, or something. Um, here, because it's a criminal matter, you're going to be punished if you're found guilty. Obviously, if you're found innocent, then you're free. But if you are found guilty, you're going to be punished, usually by the judge. Uh, sometimes the judge has to use mandated guidelines, which basically means that if you're convicted of this crime, then you get a certain number of months or years in prison. Um, 
Now, sometimes judges can use their discretion, meaning they could say, well, this is your first time, your first crime. I'm going to put you on probation. I'm going to order community service. So some states allow judges to uh, be flexible in the types of punishments they deal out. Now, there's some problems with that, right? Because if you've got a biased judge, he might be giving certain punishments to this type of person, and then he might be giving other punishments to this type of person, even if they committed the same crime, right? And that goes back to those civil rights issues uh, we talked about last time, uh, basically discrimination. So you don't want judges to discriminate against the defendants that they have to punish. Uh, and you can come up with lots of examples in the news about someone who was convicted of, let's say, rape, uh, getting, you know, a long uh, prison sentence, but then another person convicted of, of the same crime, rape or something, uh, the judge goes easy on them. You know, you, you see those stories a lot in the news. So there's a lot of tricky aspects to the sentencing process, um, but a lot of states use what's called mandatory or, or mandated guidelines to try and prevent some of those uh, d some of that discrimination from happening. And then once again, finally, you've got the appeals process. Um, most of the time, it's just going to be the defendant here that appeals. Um, so if I lose as a defendant and I've found guilty, then I can try to appeal and get my conviction overturned. Um, if the prosecution loses, a lot of times that'll just be the end of it, right? If I'm found not guilty, that should be the end of it. But I have I've talked to a judge before and they said that on rare occasions, the prosecution can try to show that they didn't get a fair chance to prosecute you. Uh, so there is that rare chance that even if you were found not guilty and the prosecution wins the appeal and shows that maybe the jury was biased in your favor, uh, then maybe they could get a new trial, even though you might argue that's double jeopardy. But they, they would have to show that the, the trial itself was unfair to them. Um, so that's something to think about. OK, so criminal. So that's criminal. So just to review. The basic steps for the criminal process. There we go. Uh, so this is a little bit different of a chart here. Uh, remember, it's going to start with a crime. There's going to be some sort of arrest and then what's called the prosecution. Make sure you understand that word prosecution. They're basically representing the government. They are the, the government is the plaintiff and the prosecution. They work for uh, the government. They're the ones that are bringing you to court, uh, charging you, trying to show that you're guilty. Uh, and then if you are found guilty, there's going to be some sort of punishment in the form of corrections. And that word corrections is interesting, right? The idea is we want to correct your behavior, uh, whether uh, you're punished severely with, with years in prison or if it's just a minor punishment. But the main idea is to rehabilitate the offender. Now, of course, if it's the death penalty issue, there's no correcting that behavior. Uh, they're going to go ahead and execute you. But for everything else, the idea is if you're going to come out of prison one day, we want to correct your behavior, so we call that corrections or rehabilitation. You want to rehabilitate uh, the uh, convicted person. OK, so that's civil versus criminal. Hopefully you can use that if you're struggling with it. Um, either type it up digitally and, and upload it or you can just fill this out and take a picture of it, send it to me. Uh, and don't forget to leave me feedback. Uh, I want to know, you know, how we can make this more interesting, better, more engaging. Um, is there too much work? You want more work? Uh, just let me know. Uh, if you go to our, our page at the bottom, there's a feedback section. Fill out a, the little form. Uh, leave some comments for me uh, so that we can uh, keep you guys working. Okay, stay safe. All right. Really?